and uh, we are in this discussion we are going to have a on uh, this interaction mechanism of EM radiation with ground and spectral responses curves which we are also going to discuss uh, in this class. Uh, earlier in just in the previous uh, discussion uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, uh, the interaction of uh, EM radiation uh, within the atmosphere. We little bit touched about the, uh, the radiation interaction with the ground. But now we will have a, a, a brief discussion on how this EM radiation interact with different objects which are present on the surface of the earth and uh, then how their spectral response curves are generated. Uh, if we take the example here is about uh, they say example about the vegetation and uh, then uh, that incident radiation which is might be the solar radiation here which may get reflected, absorbed or transmitted. So, three things may happen. So, it depends on the type of target where this uh, incident radiation is uh, falling. Different uh, vegetations, different types of vegetations or different conditions of even same vegetation may reflect, may give different kind of signals. As he has shown that the vegetation having the maximum reflection in the infrared part of EM spectrum. But uh, whereas in the visible part it does not have much reflection and in other parts also little bit uh, there and then here peaks but rest it is not there. So, what we understand through this uh, curve of vegetation. Uh, not very any, any specific vegetation, but any type of healthy vegetation that uh, it is having the maximum reflection in infrared channels. So, when we see the satellite images and they say color composite or false color composite, in case of false color composite we assign red color to infrared channel and vegetation is having high reflectance. So, in false color composite vegetation appears as red. But in near true color images like you see on Google Earth or others, then generally vegetation and uh, this infrared channel is assigned green color and you see the vegetation appearing in the green. So, um, vegetation what we understand from this that vegetation having the maximum reflection of incident radiation in the infrared part of EM spectrum. If we compare with this water, so it is having just in the beginning of EM spectrum or visible part of EM spectrum, it is having little reflection, but rest is complete absorption is there. So, in the previous uh, discussion, I have mentioned that in infrared channels or infrared bands on rem of remote sensing images, we find that when the infrared channel having maximum reflection for vegetation, but for water it is complete absorption. These are ideal conditions. If vegetation is not healthy, water is having turbidity or pollutants, then different kind of curves. So, we are talking about pure things. Also, if you are having bare soil, it behaves differently in different part of EM spectrum. So, in the beginning of a visible and near infrared, it does not have much reflection, but later on it is having quite good reflection. So, what we gather from this uh, that each and every object which is present on the surface of the earth may interact uh, differently uh, in different uh, parts of EM spectrum when this uh, incident radiation hits that one. So, radiation is not uh, completely absorbed or scattered in the atmosphere, part of which we have also discussed different components in percentage can reach and interact with the earth surface. So, whatever the uh, material or objects which are present it will interact with those. And there are three forms of interaction uh, which may takes place when this uh, uh, incident radiation occurs that is upon it depends on the surface. So, one is uh, the absorption like water body in infrared absorbs the infrared radiation and uh, trans may transmit 
and also may get reflected like vegetation reflect maximum in infrared. So, the total incident energy uh, with the, uh, in will interact with the surface in one or more of uh, these three ways and that is absorption, transmission and reflection and the portions of each will depend on the wavelength of the energy and material and conditions of the features. As just discussed that if vegetation is not healthy then we will not get this standard curve for vegetation. And same way if water is not pure then again we will not get the similar curve here. And in different as you can realize that in different wavelength bands or different channels or bands of different sensors on board of satellites these objects or these features will interact differently. So, that is why when we make color composition of uh, different bands in order to make color images, we try to get maximum, uh, uh, maximum reflection of different objects at least in those three channels which we are uh, combining for RGB or red, green, blue color combination. So, in remote sensing what we are interested is measuring the radiation which is reflected from the target because the solar radiation will hit say vegetation or road or a mountain and whatever it is reflected back which reaches to the satellite that is most important for us or to the sensor that is most important. And uh, we refer to two types of reflection uh, which represents the two extreme ends of the way in which energy is reflected from the target. One is the specular reflection and another one is the diffuse reflection. So, two types of reflection may occur here. A specular reflection example here shown that maximum energy is reflected back towards the sensor and whereas, diffuse reflection may occur on the and the soil surface may be on a vegetation. Now, examples are also given here uh, as I uh, just mentioned that when a surface is smooth we get a specular or mirror like reflection from a water body also sometimes uh, we get uh, this mirror like reflection and one of the very uh, famous example of specular reflection uh, in satellite images which is seen from water body especially in the ocean parts and that is called sun glint where almost all, all of the energy is directed away from the surface in a single direction and that is recorded by the sensor. So, you see a very wide patch in satellite images of a water body when the sun glint phenomena occurs. That is sun glint phenomena is nothing but a specular or mirror like reflection from the surface, but that may occur when water and body is very calm. If when sea is not very calm, it is uh, you know having lot of waves and other things, then you may not get uh, that sun glint kind of phenomena. It's, and diffuse reflection as you are seeing uh, may be vegetation, may be wear soil, may be mountains, you may get diffuse reflection. So, diffuse reflection occurs when the surface is rough and the energy is reflected almost uniformly in all directions. And that and uh, the disadvantage with diffuse reflection is that the energy which uh, supposed to be reaching to the sensor uh, will not be there only very little energy will be reaching there. But in case of a specular reflection and uh, the um, almost all the energy get directed uh, towards the sensor and you get a very good uh, registration of the energy or signals. And so, most earth features lie somewhere between perfectly specular and perfectly diffuse reflector. That means, none uh, natural objects are perfect specular and nor perfect diffuser. They fall in between these two extremes. Whether a particular target reflect specularly or diffusely or somewhere in between, basically it depends on the surface roughness of the feature in comparison to wavelength of incoming radiation. So, depending also wavelength. So, this is wavelength dependent, but nonetheless also roughness or surface smoothness dependent and reflection. 
if the wavelength are much more smaller then the surface variation or particle sizes that makes up the surface diffuse reflection will dominate so wavelength that means in the shorter wavelength a diffuse reflection for example if fine grained sand may be in desert conditions would appear fairly smooth as long as wavelength um, microwave but would appear quite rough in the visible wavelength because wavelength in case of microwave are very large and therefore these small changes or a small differences in the sand particles may not be get registered with that and therefore it will appear smooth in case of microwave but in visible channels rough now uh, leaves if we if now we instead of a complete vegetation cover if we tra start talking about an individual leaf or uh, these leaves then uh, the chlorophyll basically which is making this reflection high so chlorophyll strongly absorbs radiation in the red that is the visible part of the red and blue wavelengths but reflect green wavelengths and that is why we see uh, so here we are talking only about the visible part of em spectrum so uh, because uh, uh, different uh, colors uh, are there in the visible part so red part and blue part is almost completely absorbed by the vegetation whereas the green is reflected most and infrared so when the uh, incoming radiation or solar radiation is coming that may have infrared and of course it is a white light so it will have also red green and blue but when reflection occurs then only the red part is absorbed blue part is absorbed only the green is reflected and infrared is reflected and this is because of and the uh, pigment or the chlorophyll which is present in the leaves so the leaves which appear greenest darkest to us in summer when chlorophyll content in its maximum it depends you know the summer word is here but in some uh, for some kind of vegetations the darkness in the leaves may come in some other time of the year also so not necessary always summer whereas in autumn uh, uh, autumn there is a less chlorophyll in the leaves which because in deciduous trees leaves may be falling about to fall and they will have less absorption and proportionately a more reflection of red wavelengths and that is why these leaves will appear either yellow or red uh, and so, so that means they are reflecting more and uh, this uh, red part or uh, blue part rather than green component further uh, as you can see that uh, green band is 0.5 to 0.78 micrometer and uh, infrared is uh, 0.7 to 0.3 micrometer generally in remote sensing sensors uh, that is exploited between 0.7 to about 1.1 micrometer so the internal structure of healthy leaves act as an excellent diffuse reflectors for near infrared wavelengths so if we want to study the vegetation then the best channel or best bands are infrared channels or infrared bands rather than visible because invisible there are effect of other things would also be there our eyes they are sensitive to near infrared trees would appear extremely bright to us at these wavelength if if our eyes would have been but uh, our eyes works only in the visible part of em spectrum so we see only the green and reflection reflection in the green part of em spectrum in fact measuring and monitoring the near infrared reflection is one way that scientists can determine how healthy or unhealthy vegetation may be uh, because a healthy vegetation should reflect maximum in the infrared part but when uh, there is there are stresses in the plants or trees or leaves then this chlorophyll content will reduce and then this reflection in infrared instead of that it may move towards the visible and especially towards the blue directions so we we say uh, you know the blue shift in the red edge uh, in case of a vegetation which is suffering from stresses or unhealthy vegetation there are uh, uh, there are uh, this is how 
that when we see uh, uh, vegetation in infrared channels, this is how we see here. That you see that a vegetation, a healthy vegetation is appearing as a very wide because this is black and white. So, it is uh, having the maximum reflection and therefore, you are seeing and uh, it is showing lot of brightness the healthy vegetation. There might be some vegetation may not be healthy which may be reflecting less. So, this is typical example of infrared bands. Now, if we take the water little bit we have discussed when we uh, discussed that spectral curve of water, bare soils and vegetation. But now, uh, in case of uh, pure water it behaves differently, but when water is having pollutants it will behave differently and when water is having turbidity it will behave differently in different part of EM spectrum. So, water in longer wavelength visible and near infrared radiation is absorbed more by water than shorter visible wavelengths. So, when we move towards the infrared it is a completely absorbed uh, by the pure water and uh, therefore, we do not get any reflection and therefore, in infrared channels water bodies will appear as a black. Uh, but there is some reflection uh, or uh, less absorptions uh, in the shorter visible wavelengths. So, sometimes you that is why the blue component is maximum and you see water as blue rather than uh, green or red or infrared. Infrared is uh, that is the minimum. So, the maximum absorptions occur on what uh, in infrared channel of water body. So, all, all radiations is coming blue, green, red and infrared, but uh, the maximum which is getting reflected is uh, the blue one. Here the water is uh, pure, but here uh, water might be it is shown some with the uh, uh, turbidity or suspended particles and therefore, the behavior of different bands would be different. So, uh, water typically looks blue or blue green due to stronger reflection at these shorter wavelengths in visible part of EM spectrum and darker if viewed at red or near infrared wavelengths because of absorptions. And if there is a suspended sediments as shown here also, then uh, the, the layer uh, upper layer of water then it will allow water reflectivity and a brighter appearance of water will appear and uh, this this is a uh, very uh, very uh, very common thing to use uh, these uh, changes in the reflection or absorptions of radiation in different channels to study the water bodies especially the pollution present in the water that is the quality of water and also the sedimentation or sediment concentration or suspended particles or turbidity in the water can also be studied implying different bands of uh, remote sensing satellites. Like for example, here uh, we have discussed vegetation. So, healthy vegetation this is a uh, not a therm, uh, that false color composite it is a true color composite example, but it's still uh, the vegetation is appearing of course, green and water is appearing as uh, blue here and uh, the because this water is having lot of turbidity this one which you are seeing here and it is reflecting maximum in the blue part of EM spectrum in the visible channels and therefore, it is appearing as blue. And here the turbidity is less not much pollution is there and therefore, total absorption is there and that is why in this color composite water is appearing as completely black. So, water uh, if suspended particles S can be easily confused with shallow or but clear water. Sometimes uh, if uh, the uh, column water column is not very thick or water is not and uh, the, uh, the bottom is not very deep then it may give you uh, uh, almost similar kind of signatures as uh, suspended particles. So, one has to be careful ground truthing is always required before we conclude anything. So, that is why the suspended sediment can easily be confused with shallow or no, but not clear water since these two phenomena appear very similar. 
So, when we study uh, pollution or suspended or turbidity in the water, one has to be little careful about uh, whether it is because of uh, shallow depth of water uh, or it is because of turbidity or because of presence of certain pollutants in the water. Uh, in water, sometimes the algae is might be also there, especially in the sea water or in sometimes in the lake water also. So, chlorophyll in algae which can absorb more most of the blue wavelengths and reflect the green making water appear more green in color when algae is present. So, and by exploiting the, these characteristics remote sensing data are also being used to study the development of algae in different water bodies. Now, the topography of the water that is the roughness or a smoothness how uh, what is uh, there on the surface basically uh, and uh, smoothness or floating materials etcetera can also lead to complications for water related interpretation of satellite images and uh, due to potential problems of specular reflection which we have already discussed and other influences on color and brightness. So, just uh, based on whatever the discussion we had if we see a satellite image, it is not very easy to conclude whether uh, these reflections are because of algae or because of uh, uh, suspended particles or pollution. One has to first uh, analyze properly different channels and then some ground truthing if possible should also be done before conclusions are made because there might be some other factors which may influence your brightness that means reflection and ultimately color in com color composite images. And these curve, the, this curve we have seen, this, uh, these curves we have seen like water one and the rest is the absorbed. So, in the be, uh, beginning of a visible part that is uh, 0.5 to 0.7 you are having a little reflection of water. The vegetation in a near infrared is having the maximum. So, by measuring the energy that is reflected or emitted by target on the earth surface over a variety of different wavelengths, we can build up a spectral response for that object. So, if like here it is mentioned green for green vegetation. So, for different bands or different part of EM spectrum, if we are having uh, these reflection and absorptions, then we can create such curves. And these curves later on can become standard curves to compare the other curves and to identify different kind of features. Uh, these are more used in case of uh, mineral exploration because different minerals also behave differently in different part of EM spectrum. And therefore, these curves becomes very important to identify minerals in the satellite images. Similarly, for uh, different soil conditions or for different soils, we can use these curves for different conditions of vegetations, different types or species of vegetations, we can use these curves and uh, same way different types in water conditions can also be used these. By comparing the response patterns or response curves of different features, we may be able to distinguish between them for identification of different features. And uh, for example, water and vegetation may reflect somewhat similarly in visible wavelengths, but uh, are almost opposite or separable in infrared part. As you can also see that uh, water is complete absorption here and whereas healthy vegetation is showing maximum reflection, opposite behavior in infrared. Though in the visible part of EM spectrum, both may have similar behavior. So, a spectral response curves can be quite variable even for uh, same target type and can also vary with time, especially regarding vegetation or water bodies or rough surface roughness that also plays in case of water bodies or in the uh, you know desert conditions also depending on the size of dunes and other things. So, these understandings of curves or these factors which influence the spectral response of features 
of interest are critical to correctly interpreting the interaction of EM radiation with the surface. So, th this understanding of these curves will allow us to correctly utilize them and interpret our satellite images. Few examples are here along with the satellite sensors uh, like uh, if, uh, if I take the example of uh, Landsat TM, TM has been a very popular sensor. Now in the uh, more latest series of satellites, uh, Landsat series that is OLI series Landsat 8 instead of TM, now we are having ETM plus. Uh, but uh, if we, if I take this example, then see this visible channel and then uh, there are uh, uh, blue, green and red channels are there which is band 1, 2 and 3. Then for infrared in the beginning part that is there and this is the vegetation uh, to exploit this uh, property or characteristics of vegetation in infrared channel. Earlier in this uh, discussion, I was mentioning a, a blue, uh, blue shift in the red edge of vegetation. I will explain that one here now more using this uh, uh, spectral response curve. When, when, uh, whenever vegetation is suffering from some stress or less chlorophyll content due to some reason, maybe water stress or maybe stress because of some pollutants and other things, then this curve will shift towards the blue direction. That is why it is called blue shift in the red edge. The, because this edge, edge of this curve, vegetation curve is very close to the red. So, blue shift in the red edge and you will start seeing vegetation having reflection in the red channel of visible part of EM spectrum. In before that if vegetation is healthy then this kind of shift will not be there and therefore, you may not be able to detect vegetation in the red part of EM spectrum because you know that uh, a healthy vegetation will have maximum reflection uh, either in the green or infrared as we have earlier discussed this. Uh, so, different channels when I, I also mention uh, that uh, when Landsat MSS that, that the first Landsat first or one uh, uh, design MSS was designed uh, these channels were continuous there is a gap between 2 and 3 and 3 and 4 as you can see here. Why this gap? Because these are there in this part of EM spectrum, we do not have atmospheric window available and also in this part and uh, there, there is also one thing which is, which is maintained that the width of these channels should not be very high. So, that uh, we can record small changes in the different objects of the surface. So, generally, but in the visible part a lot of reflected energy is available therefore, narrow bands can be designed. But in later parts the energy which is reaching to the satellite sensors is not that much available as compared to visible and therefore, your bands become thicker. See it is very systematic that here if you compare band 4 the thickness of the band 4 is less as compared to 5 and 5 is less as compared to the 7. Because whatever the, the in order to register uh, for each pixel or each unit of the an image, uh, image a different signal sufficient energy is required. So, in this part of EM spectrum that much energy is not reaching. So, a broadband is used. Similarly, in case of a uh, spot which was a French satellite, there also the three channels bear there band 1, 2 and 3 located one is in, in near infrared and IR and two visible one is red and green one. So, nowadays when we talk uh, we will be discussing hyperspectral, in case of hyperspectral very thin bands, very thin bands of 0.5 nanometers are being designed and there are hundreds of such bands within this part of EM spectrum compared to just 3 bands in case of a spot or 5 bands in case of Landsat and TM. So, this is another very important thing to remember. Now, this whole portion we call as reflected infrared and 
as you are seeing the different like dry soil will behave differently compared to the wet soil. Wet soil curve is coming more close or having less reflection and it comes more close uh, to your sometimes even a little higher than vegetation in this part of EM spectrum sometimes it is crossing here also. Whereas uh, for clear water lake the maximum reflection you will get in this uh, blue green but if you are having turbid water then this curve will extend in the even in near infrared part. So clear water uh, ref a spectral response curve is different, turbid water is, uh, is response curve would be different and a pollutant water response curve is going to be different. So standard curves for different minerals, rocks are also, um, are also uh, made in past and they for now for because of hyperspectral remote sensing technology is available. So very fine um, uh, bends and different uh, refined curves are also being made. So utilizing the curves and their behavior in different part of EM spectrum, uh, we uh, prepare uh, color composites using different bands for different purposes. If I am uh, interested for vegetation type of study then I will be focusing more on infrared channel. But if I am uh, uh, interested for studying water bodies either turbidity or pollution or uh, water depth or other things then I will be focusing in the visible part of EM spectrum because of the behavior of the curve in different part of EM spectrum. So these spectral curves are very important for better analysis of satellite data and better interpretation and applications. So this brings to end of uh, this discussion. Thank you very much.